and I think we're making progress. And I think we have to recognize and celebrate our progress and also understand that there's much more to do. For example, 12.2 million Latinos will vote in November. And there are voices out there who already are trying to say, there's no way you're gonna get 12 million Latinos to vote. Really? That's half of everybody who can vote. So if we don't get 12 million people out to vote, then shame on us that we're not doing our job. But that 12.2 million, that will be a record number. It'll be a 26% increase over the 9.7 million who voted in 2008. And let me tell you, I believe Latinos will elect this, the next president of the United States. I believe that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I believe that because we've done it already. And let's not forget that. George W. Bush would not have won 2000 if he hadn't carried Florida. He had the Hispanic majority vote there. He had it again in 2004. In 2008, Obama got four states on his column that Bush had won in 04. He did that on the strength of the Hispanic vote. Florida, New Mexico, Nevada, Colorado. We elect presidents as Latinos. What we need to do next is hold the presidency accountable to us. And on October 23rd, here at the National Press Club, Nale will be holding a briefing on what we expect the Latino vote to be. Now we'll be only two weeks off from the election, but also looking at other races. You know, there's a lot of focus on the presidency, absolutely important, but let's not forget the entire House of Representatives is up for election. Every single member of Congress is up for election. State legislatures across the country are on the ballot. When we encourage our people to go out and vote, let's remember this isn't about just Obama or Romney. It's about the future of the Congress, state legislatures, city councils, school boards, and arguably, it's these local elections that touch people's lives more directly. So when we do our voter engagement work, let's make sure we tell people there's a whole lot of other things on the ballot other than just Romney or Obama. Now, on the voter suppression, Maria is absolutely right. These laws have been designed to keep people from voting. Ask ourselves this question, why now? Why is this happening now? Could it be that Latinos are having an impact? <laughs> Let's not forget that. Remember what, they, what, what the old adage is. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they come after you. We need to de defend our vote and defend ourselves. <laughs> One of the characteristics of our electorate that works against us is because we're so young. And across the board, whether you're white, Asian, African-American, Latino, young people vote least. So that affects us as a community. Now, one of the reasons why I am optimistic is that because this whole conversation we've been having about the DREAM Act has created a generation of young people who have some kind of political consciousness. Uh, perhaps the DREAM Act does not affect them personally, but they know somebody that's affected by their immigration status. I'm hoping that we can tap into that optimism and uh, that mobilization, that social consciousness to motivate a new generation of Latinos to vote. Now, one of the things I think we need to stop telling people is that this is the most election of our lifetime. Okay, it's not. Every election is important. And we need to stop telling people, if you vote this one time for this one candidate, your life is gonna change. It's not. We need to create a culture of participation in every single election. Because the fact is, November 6th, we have an election. You know what? On November 7th, we're going to start working on primaries. They're going to be held in Los Angeles, in Houston, in New York, and in cities all across the country to elect new mayors, new city councils, new school boards. And we need to create that consciousness in our community that voting is something we do every single year.